thanks for joining us. Thanks for bearing with us while we figured out how to make this Zoom webinars feature work. Uh, and yeah, I'm Ryan Severns, uh, co-founder and COO of Stackhawk. This is Scott Gerlach, uh, co-founder and chief security officer. And Scott's gonna run us through how we do security testing against GraphQL APIs. Absolutely, thanks Ryan. So today we're talking GraphQL. We've got a, I've got a little demo sh uh, up here. Um, if anyone wants to follow along with how this works, there's a great blog post uh, while I'm speaking and talking. Ryan can dump the link to the blog post about scanning the vulnerable GraphQL instance into the chat. Uh, but basically it's just a really simple GraphQL uh, set up that's for like a blog post. So it's got users and uh, blog post titles and all that good stuff. We'll walk through it. But then the interesting part is how we um, Stackhawk can scan that for security bugs. So walking through what the minimal setup for scanning a GraphQL instance looks like, walking through some of the results, walking through some of the findings. Um, and then if I'm brave, I might try to fix something but I'm not great at GraphQL, so I'm not sure we'll get that far. Uh, but let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started here. One other thing I'll say while Scott pulls that up is, we'll, I'm gonna be in chat. If you have any questions, feel free to send them um, and we can, we can answer them as we go. All right, so to start with, we've got our vulnerable graph API code project here uh, and you can see that there's the app folder and a bunch of other stuff in here. This is publicly available. Anyone can pull this down. Again, this is in the blog post, but um, there's a Docker compose uh, setting here. So you can just kind of up uh, Docker compose, Docker compose up this instance and then it starts running on localhost. So that's what this is here. This is our GraphQL instance that's running I've already got a simple query set up that's looking for all the users, um, including their first name, last name, their title of the posts they have, uh, just to make sure that that's working. I'll run it again. But you can see, you know, we've got some uh, user IDs and some names and, and the titles. Obviously, we seeded this database so that we don't have for real these data here which is always a great idea when you're doing dynamic testing is using seed database information instead of there's a there's potential if Stackhawk scanner or any other DAST scanner finds a place where it can delete or destroy or manipulate data, it will. Uh, so all the scan your stuff in prod tools will end up possibly doing that unless people have turned off the damage destruction checks, which means you're not getting real great coverage on testing. So we always recommend our, our customers scan this as early as you can. So obviously I've got a seed database here on my local desktop uh, and that's where this is running. So there's no danger of me destroying some customer's actual data. Uh, and then as you go through CICD pipeline to get to production, um, backing off when you're starting to get real data in there. Anyway, so now our GraphQL is up and running here and we're gonna show off the Stackhawk YAML. Um, so the Stackhawk YAML starts with a application ID and that is actually here. So uh, when you sign up for Stackhawk, it will walk you through a wizard that says, here, we're, let's help you create a new application, which looks exactly like this. It asks you for the name of the application. So a repo name, um, the name of the API endpoint, the name of the GraphQL endpoint, however you want to name it. It's largely unimportant. The only place you see that name is here and then in the scans page. So you can name it whatever you want. I've picked Graphy Grafferson for this particular thing because Bodie McBoatface was already taken. Uh, so Graphy Grafferson is what we're gonna do, but the application ID is the important part here. So this application ID in the portal is exactly what matches what's in my configuration. Then I've also said this is in my development environment. So obviously in my local host development, uh, you can, as you can see over here, you can pick different names of environments to look at um, a thing as it progresses through CICD. So development, 
CI staging production, if you want to, et cetera, uh, is, is the kinds of names that you can pick in here. And once again, the wizard will help you with that by giving you some pre-populated, here's popular things to use. So development, pre-production, production. And then lastly, where can I find the running host? So this one is actually localhost colon 3000, so port 3000. This is exactly where you, you, this is what you would think it is. It's where you find the running HTTP endpoint. So in this case, again, we're looking at localhost port 3000. Then the other piece of this configuration uh, that's important because we're doing GraphQL is turning GraphQL on in the Stackhawk scanner. And that's this section here. So the GraphQL configuration, we enable that part of the scanner. We tell it where the schema introspection path is. There's a lot of, there is some misinformation about interest, turning the introspection uh, path off because that makes it hard for attackers to attack the GraphQL endpoint. It, sort of does, but only through obfuscation. It also makes it hard to use because then it doesn't help you with autocomplete and all that good stuff. Max depth, how far down the recursion list do we want to go? Um, the Stackhawk scanner will try as many mutations and queries as it can. This is how we're starting to limit it. How deep do we want to go in these queries? What's the URI max length? So this is actually RFC code. It will go longer than this if you let it. Uh, and then how to do introspection. So these are kind of some custom settings that we have and there's great documentation on what all these settings do on docs.stackhawk.com. But that's it, that's how you configure the Stackhawk scanner. This Stackhawk YAML lives along with my code. So anybody that checks out this code base and wants to run this same scan against this same GraphQL endpoint has the configuration. Uh, so there's no, there's no ambiguity in wait, is my configuration different than your configuration when you scanned and why do we have blah, blah, blah. Security as code type settings here. Security or configuration as code. So everyone has the same configuration. CICD has the same configuration. There's no gotchas in uh, different config. Now that we've got that configured, the next part of this next step is running the actual scanner. And I'm not gonna do that because it'll totally blow up my webinar screen share here. However, here's what it looks like. It's just a simple Docker run. So we're doing a Docker run. Uh, I've got my Stackhawk API key in my environment files or in my environment in this, in this terminal. I'm just pulling that into the configuration, um, mounting this directory here so that I can actually, so the scanner can read this configuration and then calling the uh, Stackhawk Hawk scan scanner. Uh, if this is your first run, it will go and pull that container down from Docker Hub. If it's not your first run, it'll just fire up and start going. So you can see what that looks like in my terminal here. We've got the beginning of a run starting, uh, the development environment, app ID is valid. This is the scan ID, so this part's unique. Almost none of this you need to worry about, except for this part where we're saying GraphQL engine is on in the scanner which then starts scanning, looks at the GraphQL, um, introspection endpoint starts working on uh, enumeration, as you can see. So we're doing GraphQL enumeration. It's finding the queries that are possible and available through that uh, introspection endpoint. And then it starts testing. So it starts crawling and testing the endpoints. Once it's all done doing that, it will kick out a summary of its findings. So here is what the summary looks like. So you can see I've got a remote OS command injection. We'll probably dig into that a little bit. And a SQL injection, probably dig into that a little bit. My favorite SQL injection, uh, false positive shows up here. So we're working on killing this particular plugin because it's not great. But then some of the mediums and some of the lows that show up here too. At the very end, oh, the other thing, all of these paths in GraphQL, interestingly enough, say GraphQL, because that's what the path looks like. We're working on some ways to make that a little more unique. So it just doesn't all show up as the same path, uh, which is sort of a challenge in GraphQL, but we're working on how to break that into more meaningful path stuff. At the very end here, we've got 
uh, the link back to the Stackhawk platform to look at the details of this scan. So this is just a direct link, we'll follow it so we can see. Once again, this is the same output as the terminal with way more details. So you can see we've got, here's all the paths that we found, GraphQL, uh, robots, sitemap, the roots, those kinds of things. And then we've got a summary of the findings. So we've got one high that I need to be paying attention to, 95 mediums, and then I've got some assigned stuff up here and we'll walk through what that actually means. So this very first one is one of those assigned ones. Uh, remote OS command injection. So the cool thing is you can click this thing and start digging into what this actual problem is. So you can see, obviously we're on the GraphQL endpoint. Um, previously, I turned this into a JIRA ticket because we have a JIRA integration. You can see I've actually pushed this information into my fake JIRA account where my product manager, me, will also prioritize this in my backlog sprint for me to work on. It's a, it's a highly uh, effective product team. So because I've already done that once, uh, the next time the scanner finds this, like you saw, it will stop trying to bring my attention to this issue. So I have found this once, we made a ticket, we're going to deal with it. It will stop trying to say, hey, you got to do something with this, which is evident by two things. One is I've already assigned this particular issue in the command line output. You can also set the scanner to break on high. Uh, so if it finds a high that's new, that's not triaged, it will break and so therefore break build if you'd like to do that. And that's what this does. So it would have actually broke on this guy and not this guy. Once I triage this guy, then all of my highs would have been triaged and it would stop breaking, um, exiting non-zero in the build. The other place you can see those triage stuff is in here, right? So I've got this one high that it's saying, you know, it's color. It's saying, hey, you got to pay attention to this. That's this guy. Um, so we can actually look at that too, but let's stay with this remote, com remote OS command injection first. So we can see the request response that actually triggered this thing. So we can see that it was a mutation. mutation uh, and we passed in a command that said cacao and sleep 15, and the response was uh, bin shell caca command not found. So that's probably not good. Let's dig into that a little bit, I think, just to show what this actually looks like in GraphQL. So instead of our all users query, we're gonna run this mutation, super secret, super secret private mutation it takes a command, which is a string. Super secret private mutation command is command. And let's pull back our favorite guys here. So this is running a super, the super secret private mutation that exists in this GraphQL endpoint. It takes a command as a string. Uh, so we're gonna give it a variable. Uh, don't watch me copy and paste like I've prepared. Okay. So I typed out that whole sentence since they're just really fast. Uh, so the variable that we're passing in here is cat Etsy password. For those that know, Etsy password on Linux is where we store usernames, not passwords contrary to file name indication. But being able to do this leads to bad things down the road. So let's see if it actually works. So you can see that this actually returned all the usernames that are on this particular Docker instance that are running. So you've got a root user, you've got a daemon user, you've got a systemd user, core dump, a daemon user, you know, lots of interesting things. Uh, that also means you can do other stuff too, like uh, ls for log. So you can see all the log files that exist in the system. That's command injection. So the way that what has happened there is we've wrote, written this uh, 
GraphQL endpoint to be able to take user input directly from the user, not sanitize it in any way, and just run it on the system. That's super bad. So that is why we actually marked this particular remote OS command injection as a we'll fix it later type of ticket. Uh, the same thing exists for this MySQL guy, so we can actually triage this a little bit. So once again, we're running a query here, uh, feeding it some variables, and the response here was a weird search. So I don't know if this is actually a real thing, but we'll try it just to see what happens. So we're actually doing the search query. So we'll change our mutation here to be oops, a query search query string guy. Oops, search. Our query is going to be query. And that, and then, so I think our query is doing something like select something from the database where uh, ID equals, and if we can pass directly into that query, other SQL language, bad things can happen. So what we're doing here is passing in a, the end of our query, uh, as well as an and one equals one, and then commenting out the end of what that query could be. So let's see. So that returned everything as true. So I don't know exactly if that's what is supposed to be happening and getting into the details of how to do SQL injection is interesting, but knowing that you've, you're taking user input directly from the user and not sanitizing is important. But the way I can test this to see if this part of this query is working is just change one of these things to uh, one equals two. So that should be false. And I actually don't get anything back. So this is manipulatable by what I am passing into the query. So that's actually a real one. Um, so we should probably assign that as well. So I'm gonna send that to Jira uh, in my dev project. Got the SQL injection in my Graphy Grafferson. Simple create issue. Now we've made a ish, another issue in my Jira instance, which pulls in some of the details about the application as well as a link back to the findings so that I can to go there we go <laughs> a link back to the findings so i can when i pick up this ticket later to work on i can actually look at the details again in here to figure out how to recreate this particular problem and figure out how to code around it a couple other things that are kind of cool that i want to show you in just in the platform not necessarily graphql um, related but lots of really good documentation for the CI pipelines that we have integrations for. So how to run Stackhawk in these pipelines, obviously that Jira integration and then a Slack integration as well. And so when you fire off, we're working with Graph, uh, Graphy Grafferson, which I don't have wired up, but I can. So I can say, hey, the people that work on Graphy Grafferson are actually in this, uh, da -da 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 -da, maybe not. We'll just wire this up to the Scott demo channel later. And so when that will actually fire, when I start a scan, you'll actually see something that looks like this, where the scan has started, the scan ended, the findings of the scan, uh, and within the next couple of weeks here, we'll have the triage information in this as well. So you can actually wire up each application that's uh, being worked on in your organization to the team and the channel that they want to get notifications in, which is super cool. That way there's not just a single channel that everyone needs to go check on. Uh, there's not multi-channel blasts all over the place. You can be very specific about the context that you're putting into a channel for a dev team. So that's, that is our how to scan, uh, how to security test GraphQL, basically. I wanna dig into this app a little bit, just to kind of show you some of these, uh, we'll dig into that command injection one. 
because of this one I know fairly well. So in our uh, models, no, nope, I don't know this well. <laughs> Let's not do this. <laughs> I don't know that one well. Anyway, anybody have any questions I can answer for anyone um, about GraphQL or Stackhawk or anything that you saw here or maybe didn't see? Ryan, you're going to have to read me questions because I can't see the chat if they're putting them in there. Cool, yeah. I don't see any yet. Give it another minute or so. Sounds good. All right, while we wait, uh, if, if you're interested in testing this out, uh, you can always just sign up for an account at stackhawk.com. Um, we're always around as well. Feel free to shoot us an email, happy to help. I think that my chat did not go through to everyone the first time, um, with the way that Zoom has things bucketed. So just sent out that link with the blog post again if you didn't see it the first time, uh, about how you can go recreate this yourself. Doesn't seem like we have any questions, so I think we'll, we'll wrap up here. Thank you guys very much for taking the time to join us today. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Sweet. Have yeah, a great day. Thank you.